All right, guys, I need to take a few minutes to show you the drawing slash painting that a girl named Takax from Hungary drew of my Corvair. She had tagged me in the beginning stages of the drawing when it was just pencil, and it was clear that it was gonna be a pretty incredible piece. My friend Dan Crosley from Connecticut, who actually shot the Corvair on film for issue two of Rusty's magazine, which is also based out of Hungary, that has yet to come out, but he shot the whole feature on, on film. He sent Takax a high-res photo, and that's what she basically drew. Once she started posting some photos nearing completion of the painting, I was just completely blown away at how incredibly detailed and how well this painting was coming out. So I had contacted her and I asked her if she'd be interested in making a print and selling me a print of the painting of my car. And uh, she basically responded by saying uh, that she doesn't normally make prints nor does she sell any of her work. So. I was kind of bummed. I've had a few other people draw the Corvair and, and a few people actually make eighth scale models of the Corvair and I've wanted to buy those too and a lot of these artists won't sell their work. Uh, so for me it was a little frustrating because uh, it, it means so much to me that somebody halfway around the world would spend so much time on one of my cars in one way or another, whether or not it's a painting or, or a, a die cast model or whatever. So instead of making a print and selling me a print, she said she would send me the original drawing if I would send her a Governor's Club t-shirt because she'd always wanted one. Now that just floored me. It wasn't enough that she spent hours, I don't even know how many hours, drawing my Corvair and doing a phenomenal job. But the fact that she was willing to send me the original for a Governor's Club t-shirt was just pretty incredible to me. She didn't want any money for it and so I'm putting together a care package for her because this just means so, so much to me. So it just came in the mail and I've recently gotten a frame. So this is just, I mean, what an honor to have something like this in my home. The detail, I mean, I can't even, I bet a camera won't even capture the half of it, but the detail in the, the bumper, the valence, the headlights, the headlight bezels. Yeah, it just blows my mind that somebody that far away would draw something like that uh, and send me the original. Takax, thank you so, so much if you're seeing this. This honestly means the world to me. I, I'm so happy seeing it hang in my house and uh, the fact that you took so much time and, and used so much of your talent to, uh, to emulate a rusty bucket of a car is, uh, is pretty incredible to me. So thank you so, so much. So this vlog is jumping all over the place and it's kind of taken place over the course of a solid week or more. And I am headed over to my friend Jason Singleton's in Acton, Maine because I put the word out that I was possibly looking for some 15 inch, real narrow three piece four log wheels to build a setup for the 700. I haven't posted too many old build thread videos of the 700 yet, but my father and I cut and split those steel wheels. We cut the centers out, moved the centers out to basically make them like a zero lip steel wheel in order to fit underneath the 700 body. I'm running a two inch narrowed beam up front, but we didn't tub the rear. We had just about 750, if not more, hours into this project. And in order to get it done for Alpine Bag Fair in Georgia in time, we didn't have time to tub the rear end. You know, the torsion tube, trailing arms, axles, you know, everything had to be shortened in order to get a wheel of any width really underneath that car. So we moved the centers out on the steel wheels. I'm running 15 by fours up front and 15 by five and a halfs in the rear with a zero lip setup. So as you can imagine with the space allowance underneath that body, to build a three piece wheel in a 15 inch diameter is kind of tough. I'm back from my buddy Jason's uh, in Maine. I didn't vlog anything when I got out to Jason's because we hadn't seen each other in a while and we just kind of hung out and chatted for a little bit. I'm gonna end up going back out to his place probably, I don't know, in the next couple months to help him finish up um, some air suspension management and a few other things on uh, his pretty sweet beetle that he's building right now. So I'll end up getting some footage out of his place. He's got a lot of really cool air-cooled projects going on. But we picked up, um, he's got a small wheel collection and I actually picked up some McLaren fitment 
some four by 108 uh, OZ Vegas, um, or technically the MSW OZ racing wheels. Um, these are a 15 by seven with a high offset, which is good. But as I mentioned on the 700, I need to basically make a zero lip high offset four inch wide wheel in the front and five and a half inch wide maybe could get away with six in the rear so i've got some half inch lips and i've got a three and a three and a half inch lip that i'm ultimately going to use as barrels uh, so i'll weld up the valve stem hole and um, these are just some that i borrowed from jason to basically spec stuff out i'm heading down to mass tomorrow to pick up a set of four half inch 30 hole bbs lips from my buddy mike assuming that those are what I'm going to have to use for the lips, whether or not I face mount the face of the wheel or sandwich mount it like it's uh, done from the factory. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these broken down and that way I can start uh, tentatively fitting different lips uh, as barrels and the short lips and just kind of see what configuration might work and uh, get it mounted on the 700. The hardware on these OZs are a 10 point. I know some of you guys may have messed with this before, but at first glance, they just looked like a 12 point like most any other hardware like BBS or uh, other European motorsport split wheels. But these on the inside and the outside are a 10 point and you can't really buy those anywhere locally at uh, parts stores, at least around here. So I've ordered an eight mil and a 10 mil online. They'll hopefully be here in the next couple days. But yeah, these are, if, if you're working with old OZ stuff, at least the MSW uh, Vegas, they're, they're a 10 point. All right, so we are doing the front wheel bearings on the E23 today. I've already got one of the wheels off. Corey and I are here at my dad's shop and he's like, are we gonna vlog any of this? I'm like, yep, totally forgot. We're trying to get this done and not be dilly-dallying. So to me, videotaping all this stuff is dilly dallying so we just got right into it so we're gonna do front wheel bearings today getting pretty close to being done with the car until we leave so i've had the outer bearings out to just kind of inspect them and then re-grease them and put them back in get them tightened up where they feel good and then run it but i've never gotten a look at the inner bearings and since we're going to be driving this thing 3,000 miles and since i've put well more than 300 3,000 miles on it since i've bought the car i wanted to at least get a good look at them so i was going to just get a new seal to put them back together and then i thought might as well just do bearings <laughs> let's just put new bearings in it we're going to be that far in is it coffee time yet Almost. I watched an elderly lady put her Mustang into a building this morning. And you can't make that up. The grandkids came running out of the car yelling and screaming and I, I was the only one there that saw it happen. And hoping that uh, she didn't suffer a stroke or something crazy. But the front license plate was stuck to the wall like three feet up. So I think what happened was, was she was probably in okay health before the accident. Accidentally stepped on the throttle instead of the brake, launched the curb, launched the car into the building, scares the kids half to death, airbags go off. And in that case, uh, she said that her pain was coming from uh, her back. So I'm, I'm assuming that the accident is what put her in pain. And it was an accident in itself that caused the accident. All right, so here we go with the hub. This car has an early early ABS uh, system. It's a 1981 and there's pad sensors and eight in ABS in this car. So crazy. There it goes. And bearings. This is my dad, by the way. I don't think you guys have seen him yet. <laughs> my father, John, in his shop. <laughs> And as you can see, he's working on the Super Snake tribute car that I was talking about earlier. We'll get some more shots of that later. That's a whole different project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, new bearings.
We don't have a race setter, so we're using the old race as a setter. Try to keep this loose so we don't have to pry it out. Yeah, it sounds like it's blowing down all the way around. And you get that nice ping sound. <laughs> well, Nick said he got like 5,000 hits on showing someone how to how to safety wire a knockoff wheel. A knockoff wheel, really, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We did a, did a YouTube thing. <laughs> so we got this, my father's sweet old wheel bearing grease packer here. Still works. <laughs> like it needs moving parts to work. Just squeeze that in there until she starts coming out of the bearings. Now to set it. That might be. Just getting the caliper back on. Wood bearings are in, castle nuts torqued down, bearings feel good, rotors on. All right, guys, I am in the night laser shop. It's Sunday morning. I am working on all of the TGC Tour Across America key rings this morning. I've made just over 200 of them. This is 200 here, and I've got a handful already assembled. I had some leftover tan leather, so I've, I've made a little bit more than 200. I'm fearing 200 isn't gonna be enough from the response on Instagram that we've been receiving as far as people that are coming out to all these meets. We're doing like five meets, I think, westbound, and I think we're doing, yeah, five eastbound on our way back uh, in various cities. I'm gonna put a list Hopefully in this vlog in the description if it's not I'm sorry But I'm going to try to put a list of all the meets in cities with the dates that we're holding the meets in the description below We're still locking in specific locations for most of them and times But we're getting close so working on all the key rings. I pick up all the shirts Hopefully this Tuesday we did some tour across America uh, T-shirts as well that we'll have available again. I don't think we made enough, but we'll see I guess it's not a bad problem, but would love to have enough merchandise left for some of the last few meets that we're gonna have uh, when we're coming back with the new car. So that's what I'm working on this morning. These are basically what they look like after I've buffed them and washed them. And this is basically how I assemble them. I have a little arbor press and I rivet them together. And then these, this style is just basically a leather loop style with a Governor's Club logo on one side and the 2019 Tour Across America logo on the other. We're going to do these for $10 a piece at all of the meets across the country. And this is the only time these will be available. I'm not going to make these again. I've been working on uh, the idea of building a custom set of split wheels for the 700. So I've, I've split this wheel down and this is the configuration it came in originally. It was a sandwich mount, so it was barrel, face, then lip. And so now that I've taken this apart, I've been able to basically start fitting stuff together to start test fitting them on the uh, 700. I need to order some drum blanks for the beetle pan that the 700 is sitting on so we can drill those out to 4x108 PCD for these wheels since those hubs are... Uh, four on 130 which were the late beetle four lug pattern but right now i'm working on getting more of the leather uh key rings made and finished up and assembled basically so i'm working on that for a little bit and then probably back to working on these wheels and finishing up a few things on the 7 series today guys the mail has just come in and all of the air suspension components that I'm gonna need for my new project that I'm picking up in Seattle Washington is in this is all thanks to my good friends at bag riders 
uh, just next door to me here in Vermont. I'm in New Hampshire, but they're in Vermont. It's not a bolt-in kit at all, so there's gonna be some fabrication involved in getting uh, this specific car on air suspension. But really, really excited to be working with Bag Riders again on this project. They worked with me on all the air suspension components um, on my Lada, my early Jiggly that I imported from Europe last year. I've since sold that car. Working with Bag Riders again on this new project and I could not be more excited about what's coming. So, we've got a tank, all the actual air suspension itself and management. So, super excited. Gonna be running the Airlift 3H system in this car with all the height sensors. Same setup I'm running in my 735 in my E23. I also had the 3H system in the Lada with the height sensors as well. Uh, setting everything up and getting everything calibrated, getting your range of motion right, getting your height sensor arms mounted and calibrated is all kind of tedious. You know, if, if any of you have done that specific installation before, the first one's the longest. You know, once you're into it a couple other times, you kind of have an idea as to how everything goes right from the start. So the Corvair is on the three P system. So same manifold, same harness, same idea, but I hardly ever have passengers in that car and I'm usually driving it by myself. So I don't ever really need height sensors in the car. It'd be nice to have, but I, I didn't feel it was necessary. So all the air suspension stuff's here. It will be waiting for when we get back from Seattle with the new car and it will be complete crunch time because I'm hoping to have the new car on air, wheels in, and a whole bunch of other stuff done to the car before first class fitment. So possibly be bringing that car to first class fitment with basically two weeks time after we get back. But a full week of that is going to be us in Ocean City, Maryland with the BMW 700. So there's about a week's worth of uh, time that I won't be able to work on the new car. But I also drove down to Haverhill, Massachusetts uh, to a screen printer down there uh, called Downright Merch. And I haven't worked with them before, but they came recommended uh, from a few different friends in the area. So I drove down to Mass to pick up the new Tour Across America t-shirts uh, printed on black American apparel tees. And I'm pretty excited about these. So I've got the TGC logo on the left front breast. And on the back, we've got the Sea to Shining Sea Tour Across America logo on the back. I did just under 100 of these for this trip. I think I may have grossly underestimated the amount of people that are coming out to these meets just from the reaction on Instagram. It sounds like there's a lot of people coming. So we might have to have them drop ship some to Seattle for the meets that we're doing on the way home, depending on how they do on the way out. But shirts are in, so that's checked off the list. Air suspension's in, so when we get back, we'll be hitting the shop really hard uh, trying to get this new car in suspension as long as the new car makes it home. We have a long trip ahead of us. We've got some maintenance to do while we're in Seattle and I'm going to be doing tires, belts, a bunch of stuff that we can do, you know, while we're in Seattle at a friend shop or wherever we're going to be. But mail day was good today. We got the shirts in, suspensions in. Okay guys, as usual, this vlog is jumping around like crazy because I'm not paying too much attention at videotaping everything that I'm doing. It's getting to full-blown insane mode at the moment because it is Friday night, it's 10 p.m., and this is the last weekend before we leave. So we leave basically Wednesday night. So we've just got a few days left. Corey's coming up tomorrow morning, and we're going to work on the last of the prep on the E23. I've got almost all of the TGC trip across America key rings done. I made 200 in tan, and I decided to make 200 in black too, so I doubled it up. I, I was afraid that we were gonna sell out before we even got to the West Coast. We are now holding the Los Angeles TGC meet at race service, and they're like promoting for it too, and, and it's, uh, I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. I'm really excited to not only be at race service with the E23, but to have the TGC meet there as well. So we're gonna get a chance to see a lot of our LA friends in one place, which is awesome. But what I am also doing in the meantime is I have designed a spacer for the OZ MSW three-piece wheels that I'm building for the 700. And I basically need to put a spacer between the two lips, the lip that I'm ultimately gonna use as a barrel and the lip itself. So I've designed the 30-hole spacer 
And what I'm doing at the moment, before we actually take it to uh, metal or aluminum, is I am cutting uh, test cuts out of wood. And so basically what this is gonna allow me to do is just test fit everything. I'll be able to put, this wood is only quarter inch, so I'm gonna double them up to make them half inch. I've already cut one here. So it's got the right bolt menu on it. And as you can see here, since the whip steps down on the inside, that step down hits the edge of the barrel before they can mate face to face. So there's a, there's a gap in there. So this spacer will allow the lip to sit away. And like I said, it's, it's working perfect with the laser machine so I can laser cut a few um, pre-production spacers so I can just get a few bolts through and get everything together and I can uh, then test fit it on the 700 uh, to get all of my offsets and spacing right before we start uh, messing with aluminum. So that's what I'm doing tonight. Like I said, it's 10 o'clock. I've got to get washing key rings, but I'd like to get this done. That way, uh, when we get back from California, I might be able to get some aluminum in stock and start some milling operations at my friend Nick's shop up the street. He has a lathe and a bridge port. We don't have a bridge port in my dad's shop, but Nick does, and I, I barter work with him a lot, and he's, he's great um, at helping me get set up on one of his machines and running some operations myself, which is great. So I, I'm, I'm not an experienced Bridgeport or lay the operator by any means, but I've got some hours down on his and uh, it, It's great that he'll he'll help me get tooling set up and some operations sorted out And then I can actually run everything which is which is great. So I'm really excited to get a vlog up at his Shop as well. You get a chance to see what's going on up there and uh, some of the operations involved in getting these wheels to hopefully fit on the 700 Chiron's gonna be here on Tuesday Wednesday we pack the car up and then we're out of here. So it's it's Friday night right now. So there's only a couple of days left. So yeah, that'll do it for this vlog. Gonna get right back to it tomorrow morning when Corey's here uh, and we'll finish up preparation on the seven series and everything else in time for this trip. And hopefully have the next vlog up before Wednesday when we hit the road early Thursday morning. So I'm gonna try to be caught up on the vlogs and be a day or two behind on this trip. So YouTube is caught up just as much as Instagram is. So we will see you guys in the next vlog.